My name is Claire, and I'm a partner and lead on all things AI at GSV. We're back with another weekly update on all things at the intersection of AI and education. As a reminder, this is a video version of our weekly newsletter. If you're not subscribed already, please go check it out at aieducation.substack.com, where we give you weekly updates on all the things happening in AI and education. So without further ado, we're going to center around a couple key updates and really try to go deep on them. One of them being Alibaba's release of QWQ. This is a new AI model that challenges OpenAI's O1 series in reasoning capabilities, and it outperforms OpenAI's O1 preview and their O1 mini models on a bunch of specific benchmarks like AI performance evaluation or math, which is a benchmark for measuring word problems. Similar to O1, it actually performs a lot of self-fact-checking and also has improved accuracy because it takes longer to reach solutions. So it's therefore better at solving logic puzzles and answering challenging math questions. But it's also not without its flaws. The model can sometimes unexpectedly switch languages, and sometimes it's potentially confusing for users uh, because it gets caught up in these logical loops and therefore delays responses. Similar to the Seek model discussed last week, Since it is developed in China, the model does adhere to local regulatory standards there, which means that it ensures compliance with core socialist values. So if you ask things about Tiananmen Square or Taiwan, it will often result in non-responses. So generally has a very cautious design and is probably not best for use globally, but very much so a good fit for Chinese AI models. The model definitely represents a growing interest in reasoning models amidst a broader scrutiny of traditional scaling laws. So we're now seeing models from OpenAI, Google, not necessarily advancing as rapidly as we'd expect. So there's this broader shift in strategy away from just throwing in more data and more compute. So there's kind of a scramble to trying new AI approaches and architectures, as well as new development techniques. One of them notably that we're seeing within QWQ as well as O1 is this technique around test time compute, which is also sometimes known as inference compute, but generally it gives models extra processing time to complete tasks. And it's used for models like O1 and QWQ. So if you look at more traditional AI models, they typically take an input, so like a question, and then produce an output, aka an answer, in one single computational pass. The model doesn't necessarily take time to think or pause to evaluate its steps or refine its response. However, with these newer AI models that are grounded in reasoning, the model processes the input multiple times. It takes time to break its smaller parts. It checks its intermediate steps and then refines its outputs. It also, in the process of doing this, allocates a lot more computational resources for harder problems. So if you ask it, what is two plus two, it might just go through one computational pass. But if you have a complex reasoning task, it'll identify as such, and then it will add more compute to solving this harder question. And it might recognize the need to add more steps to infer things like physics, context, and assumptions. So all in all, these models allow us to better tackle tasks that require logic, any step-by-step deduction or planning, but it also does come at a cost of higher compute costs as well as increased latency by using more compute during inference. Another interesting development comes from Amazon doubling down on its investment in Anthropic with an additional $4 billion, but with a significant condition that Anthropic will use both AWS and Amazon's custom chips to train its AI models. This deal is important because it's more than just funding. Amazon is essentially making a strategic move here to secure its position in all things AI infrastructure, especially given Anthropic's massive compute need. Anthropic reportedly prefers NVIDIA chips, but the company's projected burn rate for 2024 is $2.7 billion, most of it coming into compute. And so this likely makes Amazon's terms and offer of chips way too attractive for Anthropic to refuse. As part of this, Amazon is also planning to integrate Anthropic's models into Alexa. And notably, we're also seeing other initiatives from this partnership, including Anthropic, AWS, Palantir, all partnering to potentially provide cloud capabilities to U.S. intelligence agencies. Despite all of this, this comes amidst 
a lot of big tech coming under fire for potential AI antitrust concerns with both Google and Microsoft. It remains to be seen whether Amazon will face a similar scrutiny with this Anthropic partnership, but this now does make $8 billion invested into Anthropic. In terms of capabilities, Anthropic also launched their model context protocol. Essentially what this is, is just an initiative that aims at standardizing connections between AI models and external data sources. So in very layman terms, it's kind of similar to an API. It creates this common language for AI systems to communicate with different data sources, as opposed to requiring separate APIs for every source. So think of it kind of like a universal adapter for AI systems that you can plug into various databases, apps, and softwares without needing custom work each time. And this therefore reduces development time and complexity and makes it easier for developers to connect to AI systems to diverse data sources. And what this really means on a startup level, it means one, faster AI integration, meaning that with something like MCP, you only need to integrate it once as opposed to building integrations across many systems. And then two, better AI performance because AI models can now tap into richer, more diverse data and therefore make their outputs more relevant and accurate. And then this also probably means that smaller and mid-sized companies, which typically have struggled to adopt AI due to the complexity of integrations, can now lower the technical barrier and access the same AI capabilities. Anthropics Claude also now allows users to personalize the chatbot's tones and length of responses. Right now, it comes in three different preset options. Um, formal, if you want more clear and polished responses, concise for shorter and direct, and explanatory for more educational replies. Another really cool feature is that you can actually train Claude to match your unique writing style by uploading sample content. And this ultimately just streamlines workflows by reducing the need to manually adjust prompts every single time you're doing a different task. On the research front, we're seeing a lot of interesting things coming out of the agent simulation space. Some new research coming out of DeepMind and Stanford where they were able to use AI systems to replicate a digital version of different people in just two hours of interviews. So the researchers essentially interviewed about a thousand people from very different backgrounds, asking about their lives, their values, their preferences. And using that data, they created these simulation agents, essentially AI models that are designed to act like their respective participants. And then they tested these agents across a variety of different quizzes, as well as different social behavior tasks. So for example, took tasks of both the participants as well as their AI versions on measuring traits like openness, agreeableness, extroversion, or they also put them in different social behavior scenarios to gauge their attitudes and responses to certain situations. And they even made them play these logic decision-making games like the dictator game, which is a good way to measure at how people look at fairness. And what was really fascinating is that they found an impressive 85% similarity between the human participants as well as their AI agent simulations. This is important for a couple reasons. It is a very cool experiment, but it also means that we can now use AI digital simulation agents to study human behavior without needing real life human volunteers, which can sometimes be expensive or sometimes even unethical. So scientists could actually test how people might react to new rules or new systems without running real life risky experiments. And then another very natural application of this is digital twins, where you can create AI versions of yourself that can handle tasks for you and think like you and therefore respond to emails or even potentially in a, your future attend virtual meetings in your place while still acting like you and making decisions on your behalf. Altera actually also ran a very similar experiment where a thousand agents were unleashed in Minecraft and as a collective society, they interacted autonomously and then developed roles, social structures, and even spread cultural phenomena like religion. And all of this was done without human intervention. Agents took on specialized roles. Some of them became builders, farmers, guards. They formed social dynamics. They even engaged in community-wide activities like voting or tax reform. So it's just really interesting to see kind of these simulations at scale and how even at an agent only level, they're able to interact and simulate very human societies. And then finally, we're seeing some interesting trends around the rise of AI coding tools and 
a shift towards a tougher job market for tech careers. Specifically, we're seeing a decline in demand for entry-level coders and therefore a rethinking of things like coding boot camps, which were once the golden ticket to very secure tech jobs. Job postings for software developers have dropped about 56% overall um, and 67% for entry-level roles compared to five years ago. For these boot camps, their placement rates were once as high as 90%, now plummeted to below 60% in some programs. And you have these tools like ChatGPT or AlphaCode within Google or Copilot within GitHub that are now automating coding tasks that are increasing efficiency, but also reducing demand for junior programmers. So these coding boot camps were once seen as a quick path to tech careers, but now these AI tools and broader market contractions have really complicated this equation. And so while coding does remain very valuable, I think it really continues to bring up this question of how in education, we have to continue to evolve to prepare students for industries and challenges we can't yet foresee. And that is it for this week. If you have any questions at all, we're here. My email is claire at gsv.com and excited to chat more about AI next week. <laughs>